to the 2015 David Parkin Oration for Sport and Social Change. It is with a deep sense of personal satisfaction that I get to introduce the third annual David Parkin Oration for Sport and Social Change. What started as an idea over a cup of coffee with Peter Kelly, Warwick Hatfield and myself about four years ago has matured into an event of prominence on the annual Deacon calendar. Of course, it is my great pleasure to formally welcome our guests of honour here tonight, Dr David Parkin, OAM, and tonight's orator, the Honourable Jeff Kennett, AC. Two truly outstanding Victorians and wonderful ambassadors of the power of sport as a social change agent. Deacon is honouring Dr Parkin's significant contribution to Australian society in leadership, in sport, and of course for us, from our perspective, in education. Deacon is very proud to lay, lay claim to David Parkin as one of our very own. He taught at Deacon for many years and was responsible for the development of Deacon's sport coaching course, the first of its kind in Australia. Nelson Mandela in 2000, and for any South Africans or any Africans in the room, you will know what event Nelson Mandela said this. Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that almost nothing else does. End of quote. Sport is indeed a universal language. It engages people, brings them together in a way very few activities can manage. By its very nature, sport is about participation and inclusion. It brings individuals and communities together, regardless of race, religion, cultural black background, or economic status. And sport teaches the importance of tolerance, cooperation, respect, and resilience, values that resonate particularly strongly as we witness the turmoil consuming so much of our world today. Sports' intrinsic values of teamwork, fairness, discipline, respect for the opponents and for the rules of the game are understood all over the world. I'm delighted, I really am, to um, the 2015 Parking Oration to be delivered by the Honourable Geoffrey Kennett AC. Jeff is one of Australia's most recognisable political leaders and is widely regarded as one of its strongest. His 23-year political career can be defined by powerful change. He instigated a multiple of improvements earning Victoria the reputation of Australia's most reformist state. Under Jeff's leadership, the Victorian economy was reinvigorated and even his harshest critics would acknowledge he made people proud to be Victorians again. Jeff Kennett is founder and chairman of the highly successful National Depression Initiative, Beyond Blue, an organisation that aims to increase community understanding of both depression and anxiety. In 2014, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from Deakin University in recognition of his distinguished service to the Victorian community and his special contribution to the revitalisation of the Geelong waterfront as a knowledge precinct. Do you think, for instance, of Ian Thorpe or any other swimmer who is recognised at an early age of having a talent and they become so totally focused on what they're doing that there is no room in their life for growing up? There is no room for the normal ups and downs that are associated with growing up. Expect, accept the expectation that they're always going to do better and succeed, and many of those along the way don't succeed. And some of those have impressed upon them that they haven't succeeded, or worse, have failed. But if you are lucky enough to have been selected, be it as a swimmer or a rower from an early age, or a footballer who now today gets drafted at 18 years of age, the moment you are selected, you are put into a cocoon, which for those of us who are not elite sportsmen and women, is hard to imagine. Every need is pampered for. Your diaries are set. In some cases, but a few, you get very well paid. For other sports, you work your butt off rising to your own expectation and those imposed upon you. 
for very little money at all, but you then start losing touch with the real world. Importantly, you lose touch with your peers. And at that stage, the expectation that is placed upon the individual becomes an enormous weight to bear for many. Not only the expectation that's put on them by family, even though the family says we have no expectations, just enjoy what you're doing, you know it's there. And then of course it's the expectation you put on yourself and then it's your club and if you continue to do well it's your supporters, whoever they may be. And that leads to these young men and women, as I say, becoming cocooned. They're out of step with the rest of their peer group. I often say and said when I was at Hawthorne, I actually felt the players that did best were those who unfortunately were not selected to continue and have long careers because they returned to the real world quickly. Very few of those elite sportsmen in our code, of which there are about 840 of them, actually come in, out the other end of that cocoon in a strong position with a position that they can pursue for life. And therefore those who are spun out early re-enter the community, have to then start struggling to establish a career and face the normal sorts of issues that we do. So I have always believed, and I don't know whether it started when I was a young army officer in charge of 30 uh, platoon members back in the 1960s overseas, understanding that apart from delivering my work professionally and in organisations that I've led, having governance as your first responsibility, the second has always been the welfare of those men and women that I'm responsible for. Life is short. It matters not how many years you live, but how you use your life. And it's important that every night you go to sleep, to bed, you should go to bed mentally and physically tired. If your players aren't doing that, if your sportsmen and women aren't doing it, then in fact, somewhere along the line, we are failing. I go back to what I said before, this issue of dealing with stress, change and anxiety. And I apply it to each and every one of you here too. Because most Australians don't have a mechanism for dealing with change, stress and anxiety. And by that I mean a discipline to deal with the things that cause you stress. So by way of example, every night before I go to sleep, but for a part of a second I run through the day. I wipe out the things in my own mind that I've done reasonably well or well and focus on the things that I've done less well or badly. It may be that I've offended someone. can't believe that I would do it, but many have said <laughs> that I have. And I say to myself, well, how could have I avoided that situation? Or what do I have to do tomorrow to correct it? And what I do is clear my brain. And I measure those things that I do less well against what I call the most important thing we all have. And that is our gift of life. It's waking up every morning. And the gift of life to me is the rock. And I measure the things that I do less well against that rock to determine how serious they really are. Because so many people who can't deal with change, so many people who deal with emotional stress, expectation, change, anxiety, stress, don't and can't weigh whatever that issue is against something that really matters. <laughs>